Welcome to Inspired Edinburgh, the home of powerful conversations. I'm Elliot Reeves and my guest today is James English. James is a podcaster, documentary maker, comedian, model and former star of Glasgow-based reality TV show Glow. Your Anything Goes podcast features the hard-hitting real-life stories of sports people, comedians, actors, criminals, porn stars and politicians as you explore topics from murder, depression and suicide to sex, love and comedy. In a short space of time, your show has been viewed and listened to across social media more than half a million times. Your latest documentary sees you sleep on the streets in your hometown of Glasgow for seven days and nights, bringing to light the desperation and tragedy of being homeless at Christmas and shows the plight and passion of people from both sides of the problem. James, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on, brother. <laughs> it's an absolute pleasure. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it must feel quite unique for you to be on that side yeah. of things rather than in the, the, the driver's yeah, seat, it right? Feel, it feels weird, <laughs> but it feels good also. I yeah. can just kick back and relax and I've not got the pressures of uh, yeah. Yeah, asking the questions. Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, obviously doing this yourself, you'll know the script. Mm -hmm. um, if we can start, I mean, really kind of going back to your, your early life, you know, growing up and mm -hmm. I suppose what that kind of overall experience was like for mm -hmm. you. Yeah, I grew up in a place called Porso in Glasgow, which is, he says earlier, it's one of the deprived mm -hmm. areas in the United Kingdom. It's a rough, rough place. So you need to grow up faster. You're surrounded by drink, drugs, violence. Um, but I always had good parents, always kept me on the straight and They were good people, let's say, they weren't alcoholics or uh, addicted to drink, uh, drugs. Um, but for me, the five people you surround yourself with the five people you become. So I was surrounded yeah. with drink, drugs and violence. So it became normal for me. It became a normal life. Um, I grew up in a place called Stony Hurst Street, which is, listen, there's great people there. Mm -hmm. They're fucking nuts, <laughs> but they're good people. Um, they didn't know, none, they're none the wiser to outskirts of what's happening outside of that world so okay. everyday survival mode you don't get much food um, it's scrimping and scraping balls all the time but we did what we could um, and I was lucky enough to be a good football player at okay. the ages of 9 and 10 um, get picked up with Hibs we kind of moved from a place called Stonehurst Street but 100 yards away is a place called Clarence Street which is away because the place we stayed was like tenement buildings it was like six in a block, six houses, but it was full circle of madness and mayhem. You're talking about stolen cars, people sleeping on the closes. Okay. Um, it was wild, it was crazy, but we moved to a place called Clarence Street. And I was lucky enough to get into my football career then. So that was good. Uh, I had a bit of a gift at the football, but signed for Hibs and then I thought it was a jacket lad. Thought I knew everything, mm -hmm. um, knew fuck all. <laughs> um, signed for Hibs, came through to Edinburgh. Telling all the girls I played for the first team. I uh, was only playing under 16s, under 18s, but I liked the night lifestyle. I, and then I started drinking, and then for ages of 16, 17, I started getting into the drugs, gambling, womanising, and then the life kind of spiralled out of control from there. Mm -hmm. Do you think that way of life is typical for people that, you know, like footballers who are making wages and they're looking for things to kind of spend it on? Yeah, it's is just, that a cultural thing? Yeah, yeah, well, I was going to the bookies with some of the players at 16. <clears throat> um, but I'd been gambling, thinking about it, I'd been gambling for about five years old. Um, used to play fruit machines with my gran. Really? Or, they didn't really realise the extent. My dad used to take us to a place called Shawfield, which was a dog track. He used to put like 50 pence bets on for me, mm -hmm. not realising the, the effect it would have when you get older, because then it becomes an addiction. So for me, all those addictions that I had, I was craving that dopamine. So mm -hmm. when you put a bet on, it releases dopamine in your brain, which is equivalent to heroin. Mm -hmm. So if your life doesn't feel that good, if you place a bet, then you're high, you're buzzing. Once that bet goes, your life feels shit. You don't feel important anymore. So you're constantly craving that bet, or even if it was a drink or the cocaine, you're craving that dopamine because it puts you in a high and your life feels good. But looking back, it was all the insecurities, it was all the misery I was going through that, that stuff was a escapism. So, yeah, the gambling became a major issue. That was one of my major problems, was the gambling. Yeah. At that age, from, like I say, the football, because it's socially acceptable. You think it's okay, mm -hmm. but looking back, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you're right. I mean, just to pick up on, uh, I, I wrote down a quote, Postal Park, named in a study as the most deprived area in the United Kingdom since 1971. Like, mm -hmm. I had no idea. At the extent of that, I mean, what to, to try and paint a picture for people that are maybe watching or listening, I mean, what is it like? 
Yeah, it was uh, stolen cars, um, houses getting set on fire, a lot Seriously? of gang fights. Yeah, yeah. Um, just survival mode. It was a. Uh, it was it was wild. It was crazy. But think, but when you grew up in that life, it seemed it seemed normal. It seemed fine. Seemed normalized it, Thinking yeah. back now, um, so many people, so many deaths I've seen, so many people getting murdered, suicide, um, drug overdose, and like I say, all these addictions are problems. They can come down from generation to generation. Yeah. You can bring your DNA. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily do these things. You're a bad person. Mm -hmm. If you're taking drink or drugs, or if you're gambling, or if you've got anger issues. That's a defence mechanism. Even the anger, all my friends who, if I'm honest, they're, they're crazy, but they're good people. Mm -hmm. What happens is because they're protect, protecting their heart, people are fragile. Yeah. So if I become loud, if I'm scary, and if I create fear on everybody, then they can't hurt me. So it's a defence mechanism for people to act aggressive because they are scared of getting hurted themselves. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. something I've, like, I've spoken to my friend and he says, um, he was scared of everything but fear of nothing, mm -hmm. which is, which mm. is, makes sense, do you yeah. know what I mean? So it, like, it's a defence mechanism for people to back off, keep away from me. I'll become the angriest man in the world because I'm scared of getting hurted myself. Mm -hmm. But like I say, it was a great, it's a great place and I've got to thank it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've got to thank everything I've done because like I say, it's led us to who I am today. How, but how do you maintain a level of sanity when you're around that level, that many stressors? Mm -hmm. It's hard, it's until you get out that circle, it's mm -hmm. until you get out that small box. We're all living in a small box and we're all like comfort. So we surround, if you're drinking, you surround yourself with drinkers. If you're taking drugs, you surround yourself with taking drugs. If you're gambling, you surround yourself with gamblers because if you do that, life doesn't feel as, seem as bad because mm. you think everybody does it. <laughs> but when you come out and go, shit, man, yeah. I've got all these problems. Yeah. It's a lonely journey to change. Um, but like I say, people can change and people can create the life that they want, which is a good thing also. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you've clearly been into the sort of personal development type stuff. Uh -huh. um, we'll, we'll come back to that a little bit later on. I'll be yeah, interested yeah. to hear uh, that your sort of journey into that. I mean, tell me a bit about your kind of career. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, what were your aspirations when you started out and kind of what, where did it kind of take you? Well, I had the football. The football mm -hmm. was good. I played for Hibs, but then it went for Hibs. I think it was Patrick Fissel, Queen's Park. Mm -hmm. And then it went Albion Overs, and then it went Junior. So I just nosedived because my fitness wasn't there, the dedication, the ability was there. Mm -hmm. The dedication wasn't there. Like I say, I like to women, I like to drink because it felt good for me, it felt normal. Realising I'll always make it, always had that mentality, I'll make it anyway. But the boys who maybe not had the ability of me went right by me because the dedication, the fitness levels, my fitness levels, nosedived while theirs just kept rising yeah. and rising. Uh -huh. So by the time I 21, left the football, and then for about 10 years, man, my life was a party. My life was a blur. Um, so when did that start? 21 started getting serious out of the cocaine. Started okay. the Charlie at the weekend, and then the social bowl, the drink, the drugs, um, was a Friday, Saturday, but then it came Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oof. And then my dad, died. he got down. I got to, I got to jail, actually. I was in prison at 23. I got six months in Berlin. What for? For uh, driving offences. Okay. Caught three times uh, driving while disqualified. Right. I thought, like I say, it's nothing charged. My lawyer says, look, you'll be fine. I'll see you at lunchtime. I was on the bus out of Berlin at 23. Um, shite myself, mm -hmm. scared. Like I say, playing the big man card and as if I never had a care in the world, but you're terrified mm -hmm. because you're thinking, shit, man, I'm going to get pumped in here because I was a good looking <laughs> I was a good looking guy. I was a good looking guy. Do you know what I mean? I had the gift of the gab and I'm thinking, yeah. I've watched all these films for years, but yeah. as soon as I went in there, I really, it's probably the worst thing that could happen because as soon as I was in there, everybody from Porcel was there. Okay. So I knew the majority of the people in there. I was a party boy around Glasgow, so I knew the majority of people. So that felt at home. It felt so weird. It just felt like a big boot camp. We had football every day. We had the gym. But while I was in the gym, uh, while I was in the jail, my dad got diagnosed with leukemia. Um, mm -hmm. So I came out, my head was up my ass. My best pal hung himself. And then I had two girls pregnant at the same time. So... This was at 23. I didn't know how to deal with those pains and struggles. So for me, it was a drink and the drugs was escapism for me. Mm -hmm. Because when people seen me at the weekend, I was a life and soul at the party. I, I used to pick people's spirits up, no realising I was giving everybody else my energy, that my energy was low. So during the week, it then became Valium, it then became uh, weed mm -hmm. to balance it out. So yeah. I was so high at the weekend, mm -hmm. so low. I used to <laughs> smoke and take Valium and it used to kind of balance me out again to 
kind of get through those darker days. Mm -hmm. I had too much pride to ask for help. Always thought, I never thought I needed help. Always thought, I'm not that bad, but like I say, it was a very dark place for me for 10 years, nine, 10 years. Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, and how bad did things get? When did you hit, <coughs> excuse me, when did you hit sort of rock bottom? When I turned 30, mm -hmm. when I turned 30, it was a turning point for me. Um, that's not realised, I've got more to give here. I'm not getting any younger, I've got two kids, and the last thing I wanted to look up is their dad has been a, a waster, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Somebody that they don't respect. So for me, I changed, <coughs> I wrote it down, um, sat in my sister's room, um, drink, drugs. I was never an alcoholic, but mm -hmm. the drink for me led to the coke, <laughs> Yeah. and then it led to the lying, the cheating, and then when you're so low, it was like, ah, that many problems, gambling as well, so when I turned, 30, I wrote it down, I remember, in my, I remember it as clear as day in my sister's room, in her house, um, drink, drugs, gambling, even the womanising, because everything I was doing, I was searching to fulfil a void in me, yeah. to, to fulfil an em a loneliness and an emptiness that I've had for <laughs> so long. Um, and then once you accept that this isn't the thing to do, because every time I was doing that, I was becoming more disconnected. Mm -hmm. So I wrote it all down and Three, four months, I became clean, went cold turkey on everything. Let us say, it was never heroin or um, mm -hmm. crack, or, but it was cocaine, but let us say, Valium and weed. My central nervous system was fucked. And because I've been telling that many lies for years through the gambling addiction, mm -hmm. um, stealing, lying, doing bad things to create the money to get that fix, I didn't know who I was, I was so lost. Um, so I changed and wrote it all down. After three, four months, I started getting clarity. I had a lot of bad dreams, a lot of nightmares, mm -hmm. a conscience. All the, the stuff I've done in the past, um, treating people like shit and lying. But I changed and after the four months I started getting clarity, I started doing running, I started really getting into the mindset and figuring out who I was again. Mm -hmm. And it's, it was a lonely, lonely journey. Um, but I've done the changes, I made the sacrifices and I've been blessed to mm -hmm. to make those changes, man. I, some, I was, I'd done a Reiki course, I became a Reiki master which is like healing energy, and yeah. the woman said it was a spiritual awakening I had. Okay. She says, I was blessed because for me, if you'd knew me then to now, man, it's it's black and white. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but it's, I think people have this idea that a spiritual awakening is just suddenly, they just feel divine and it's amazing, but it can be scary as well. Yeah, it's painful. Taking that path because mm -hmm. it's very lonely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's a lonely journey. The last three, four years is, it's a lonely journey. People don't understand it. Mm -hmm. When I was changing at the start, I felt like fucking Jesus. I was <laughs> preaching to everybody, yeah. this is the way to go, this is amazing, don't drink, don't do this. People were like, ah, shut up, you're a crackpot. I felt, like, I felt amazing. And I just wanted the people to feel the same as well. But what I was doing with preaching was pushing everybody away. I was pushing everybody away and they were going, he's becoming a pain in the ass. But I just wanted the people to feel the way I was feeling because I felt amazing. It made me realise all that shit I was doing was wrong. And we don't need to accept it because all my friends, they accept that life that it's okay to do that at the weekend, but you're hiding from something. Mm -hmm. You're hiding from something to any, if it's not natural, you're taking away from whatever it is you're going through. For me, I faced it head on. So now for me, it's to keep my light shining bright. If I keep my light shining bright, then it guides everybody else out of the darkness because people now ask me questions. How did you change? Mm -hmm. Why did you change? Mm -hmm. And when I have changed, like I say, actions speak louder than words. My results speak for themselves because mm -hmm. At the time, I felt as if I had to show everybody that I changed. Now, I just act, I do, and then people go, he has changed, and then that's when I get the messages, how did you change, and then I can guide them where to go for help instead of the preaching yeah. kind of side of it. Yeah. But I just felt as if I had to tell everybody I've changed, I became a better person. Listen, I ain't a monk or a saint. I still fuck up and I still probably do things I go, I shouldn't do that, but I'm aware. I feel as if yeah. I'm two steps ahead of everybody else. I feel as if I'm on this path and I'm untouchable and nobody can tell me Otherwise, where does that confidence come from? Being clean and sober. Yeah. Being clean and sober. Um, educate myself. Knowledge is power. So, I, I don't read books. I listen to audio books. Mm -hmm. My attention span isn't the greatest. If I read a page, I go, "What the fuck did I read there?" <laughs> but I can still work on that. Where I will, I should be getting used to it. But I prefer the audio book, and I get the earphones in, and I listen. I seem to pick up more. I pick up more and I go, oh, that makes sense. But not necessarily my journey is right for everybody else. Yeah. People might look and go, hmm, he's a fucking crack, but I'm going to stick to the drinking drugs, which is fine. But like I say, I'm talking from experience. I'm not reading from books here. I'm talking from the dark places I've been. So what would you say to somebody 
who was in you know was doing the things that you were doing five ten years ago. Mm -hmm. I just asked them to be honest with herself. Is this going to enhance your career? Is this going to take you to places where you know you can go to? Mm -hmm. Just ask yourself: Is that should I be surrounding myself with these people? Like I say, you're not a bad person because you do bad shit. It's just certain circumstances condition you into that person to have that life. Mm -hmm. And it can happen to anybody. You can. I know people that's multi-millionaires out there that are suicidal. Mm -hmm. And yet I know people with nothing that are the best people in the world. Mm -hmm. I put a post up the other week saying, listen, the real wealth of a person isn't with the, the money they have in the bank or the material possessions they have. The real wealth of a person is how much good they bring into the world. Mm -hmm. And you can do things for free. Do mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And we're so caught up in the world through materialism through social media that we forget what's really important. Mm -hmm. For me personally, it's the gift in life is given because as soon as you help someone, not only does that person feel good, but it's you automatically feels good. Yeah. And we forget that. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think you know, talking about that, social media has been such a, whilst it's a double-edged sword, it can be a toxic place, but there's it's such a great way of sharing information um, mm -hmm. that I, I feel as though there is kind of a, a paradigm shift or a kind of awakening to the realization that, like you're saying, yeah, life's yeah. far more uh, than just you know accumulating possessions mm -hmm. and money. You know? Yeah, there's all. I believe there is a shift coming in that social media. I'm aware of now. I'm addicted to it. I'm addicted <laughs> okay. to it because I'm craving the attention. And when I get messages, like I said, it releases dopamine, which is equivalent to heroin. So it's like pulling a fruit machine for you. I've got a message here. Somebody likes my content. I'm mm -hmm. feeling good, and that's okay. But when I'm spending four and five hours looking at a screen, mm -hmm. it becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. And I'm aware of this problem because when I wake up in the morning, your first hour is your most creative hour in the morning to balance out your day and focus on what your path is and what you've got to get done. But if you're looking at a fake screen and fake people with fake lives, because that's what it is, yeah. your life doesn't feel as good and you start looking at everybody else's life and then when your focus goes, your energy flows. Yeah. So now you start your mind goes wandering instead of actually focusing on your day. So it becomes then a problem. For me, it's a problem just now. I'm utilising it to my, my advantage, if I'm honest as well, to promote everything I'm doing, but mm -hmm. I'm spending so many lost hours on it when I could really utilise that to take my career even further. Yeah. So it's a, it's, it's a slippery slope with it. Right. Mm -hmm. So how do you plan to sort of manage that? Um, like I say, I'm aware. The plan is to get up. My, for me, my blueprint is to get up early, half four. Seriously? Yeah, half really? four. I seen Mark Wahlberg there yeah. two days ago, half yeah. two he is. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> that case. But yeah. if it works for him, who do we judge? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. My blueprint is half four. Get up at half four, get my meditation, get my breathing techniques. But I'm lazy. I'm lazy. Even though people might think I'm doing all this stuff, I'm still lazy. I know I'm not utilising my hours to my full advantage because it's scary to think we're all going to die and it's scary to think that what are we doing to be good in the world and to create massive change and massive awareness? Am I really, am I just waiting to die am I, or am I creating enough stuff to leave a legacy? Do you know what I mean? I just feel as if I'm not utilising those 16, 17 hours to, to be the person I know I can become. What are your feelings on death? We're all going to die. I used to be scared of it. Yeah. Now, fuck it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, re I'm, I'm not ready to go, but if mm -hmm. I do, I do. Mm -hmm. You've got to remember, you don't know what it's like before you're born. So it's just going to be the exact same when you do go. As soon as you're born, you start to die, which is the scariest thing, and that should mm -hmm. be the only motivation you need in life is to realise you're going to die. So what are you doing to, to be the person you want to become? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And I think we're mm -hmm. caught up in a, a fake world, man, where... People are stuck in 95s, people are stuck paying the bills and for you know it, they've, they've created the fear where they're scared to make ch take chances, they're scared to take risks, they can't leave their job because they've got these bills to pay. I can't work in this, but people prefer Monday, Friday, 95, X Factor on a Saturday night, bottle of wine and a curry. Listen, if you're happy, listen, I'm not here to judge, but mm -hmm. the majority I speak to ain't happy because deep inside your gut, you know you've got more to give life. You know you've got more to, to be that person you become. We've all got a path. And whether that's path is whatever the fuck it is that you do, but does it fulfill you? Does it make you feel good? Does it make you feel when you put your foot in the floor in the morning, okay, I'm ready to take on a day, but the majority of people aren't happy. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And you can't be happy 24-7, but you can create the life that you want. You can be the director of that film. You can just be you and make do what's right for you, but people are stuck in relationships they don't like, jobs they don't like, Fucking change it. It's mm -hmm. as simple as that. It's mm -hmm. as simple as that. Change it. Because the only person can fail is you. And that's that's what I believe.
Mm -hmm. But it's easy for me to say that because I'm on a good path. But I just know that I changed. I yeah. made the changes and the sacrifices and it can be done. Yeah. I'm loving this chat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. <laughs> Uh, how did uh, Glow come about? Like, how did wh what happened for that to come together? Well, I, I got a phone call to say it was happening. I, I, I became, I got a personal training job, which is one of my first ever proper jobs at the age of 30, 31. <laughs> um, that's when I was doing all my reading, my research. And, and I was off of drinking the drugs for 17 months. I went to LA. I came back from my auntie's funeral. Uh, I was 17 months off it. I decided to have a drink after the 17 months. Okay. And then I just ripped the whole ceiling down. I ended up back partying, uh, gambling after the 17 months because I thought I was strong enough to handle it, have a drink, but it turns out I wasn't. Um, <laughs> so the plan was to go and do motivational speaking. And uh, it turned out I didn't do that. I gave everything up again and kind of went down that slippery slope for a year. But for me, that year was the speed bump that I needed. It didn't last 10, 15 years. It lasted a year because I realised how good I felt. I realised I felt amazing when I was clean. Mm -hmm. So I got back on track, I got a phone, while I was, but while I was drinking again, the phone call came about the reality show. Listen, I rolled the dice with it, I gave it a go. It was a bit cringy. If I wasn't on the show, would I have been probably slagging it myself? Probably. Um, but you've got to take your hat off to anybody that takes chances. Yeah, um, And it was a good platform for me. Um, I was a fan's favourite. Just saying. <laughs> uh, so it gave me a platform and it built yeah. up a fan base for me. Glasgow's a tough city. Mm -hmm. Very tough. So many critics. Mm -hmm. But I believe that so many people are unhappy with themselves. So it's easy to point the fingers. It's a reflection of images. People are just deflecting on their missed opportunities or the things that they want to do, but they ain't got the balls. Yeah. So for anybody to do anything new or do something, it takes courage and guts. Like I say, I gave it two seasons uh, and it worked wonders for me. It built up my platform, it got people to know me. Because um, I was well liked on it. Uh, it should have probably done better than what it was, but I believe there's a massive market in Glasgow or Edinburgh for a reality show. Mm -hmm. If all these other places can do it, then why can't we? But uh, it kind of, I left the second season and that was it, basically. But listen, I made a couple of great friends from it and I would never change it. It was a great experience. It learned me in front of the cameras, it learned me my confidence. I was still going through that dark phase because that's the, the year I was drinking. So I was in that part of lifestyle. It was yeah. low frequency and uh, I thought that was all cool. And that was me craving attention. That was me self-seeking. Yeah. I needed that attention and I still need it. I'm still a poser and I'm still uh, love that attention. I, I, do you know what I mean? But uh, it was a great experience and I wouldn't change it, man. I met some great people, but I look back and it's kind of, you kind of fucking cringe as well. Do you know what I mean? But it opened doors for me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, if you didn't do that, you possibly wouldn't be doing what you're currently yeah, exactly, doing, etc. Exactly. I, I think you're right. I think there probably is scope for a, a good reality show, but it would be nice to see one that's not predicated on kind of bullshit values. Yeah. Going out, getting pissed, having mm -hmm. fights, womanising, mm -hmm. you know, etc. The, the the typical stuff that you yeah, see. Yeah, but that's what people want to see because that's what the majority of people do. So if they see hmm. other people doing it and it doesn't seem as, seem as bad, can you imagine sitting there and trying to spot it positivity and motivation <laughs> you don't see that on the tv mm -hmm. you see it in the mainstream media it's deaths it's murders it's rapes it's suicide it's wars mm -hmm. because if they can drill that fear into your mindset you think the world's a bad place the world's actually a good place mm -hmm. if you want to go and look for it and if you think it's a bad place then become the change that you want to become mm -hmm. do you know what i mean if you want to see good in the world be good yourself and it'll have that ripple effect do you know what i mean you can pay it forward um do good and it will like attracts like Mm -hmm. So if I'm doing good, then everything I do is for me. Do you know what I mean? I've said that to you before on the phone. Everything I do is for me. But I'm doing good to help others as well. So it's a win-win for me. Yeah. It's a win-win. I can't lose. It's true. Mm -hmm. Do you see yourself going into motivational speaking? I will do in the future. Yeah. Still got a lot to learn. Still got a lot to learn. This is part of my journey. Um, I've got different plans and different ambitions on how to do. Um, but definitely, I was going to do that in LA. I was going to start going to universities mm -hmm. and stuff. Probably need to polish up my accent. Still get a wee bit nervous, speak a wee bit fast, swear a lot. <laughs> That's la lack of vocabulary, I think. I just don't Do you think, think so? Yeah, yeah. I was never a good listener at school. I was always a daydreamer. Looking out the window, just daydreaming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's the thing at school. You use the left side part of your brain, which is the, your crunching numbers, your memorization. 
the right side of your creativity yeah. and your individuality, which I think we forgot about that now because nobody wants to be an individual. We're scared to be yourself, dress yourself, talk yourself because we think, what do they think? What does she think? But fuck what anybody thinks, man. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Nobody's going to agree what you do. For me, is if I was to tell people my visions and ideas, they've already spoke me out my ideas or visions because they're reflecting their fears onto me mm -hmm. because they don't understand the journey. Mm -hmm. So it's about doing what's right for you and creating what you want. Do you know what I mean? Everything in, my, everything in real life we've attracted, whether it's me sitting here, you sitting here, we've, we've thought it up. Mm -hmm. Everything that's created in this universe has started off with a thought, mm -hmm. whether it's cameras, aeroplanes, cars, this, this couch, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. Somebody's thought about that. Uh -huh. and if somebody says, a hundred years ago, whatever, an aeroplane came out that I'm going to make an aeroplane, people would have laughed and thought they were crazy, but they'd done it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? They'd done mm -hmm. it, these steps to get these, to get their, their end goal, their end product. I think Edison was 3,000 times or 10,000 times to, hmm. to make the light bulb. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Can you imagine yeah. it stopped after two, three times what the average person does? Yeah. You're, you're set off a failure. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You don't need to see the full staircase, but if you can take the first step to, to hit your goal, you're in the right direction. It's a 99% of success is failure on my so It's fail, 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 fail until you succeed. Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting, Edison, actually, because Edison, I think, said um, he didn't fail, like, whatever it was, 3,000 mm -hmm. times. It was just a 3,000-step process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Such a great way of looking mm -hmm. at it, you know? Because it says 3,000 times, but now we're saying it's 10,000. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's trial and error. Yeah. Y you can never fail. The only person that can fail is you. Because uh -huh. what happens is we concentrate on the finishing line too much. And then when we get there, we've created another one. We're not enjoying the journey, which the power will now come into play, which is trying to stay in the present moment. Mm -hmm. For people, we stay in the past too much, which is fear, guilt, depression, anger, anxiety. Yeah. Because I read there's a guy called Joe Dispenza, mm -hmm. um, who's about the brain, the mindset. 95% mm -hmm. um, of your day is controlled by your subconscious. So we'll get up during this, we'll get up, brush our teeth the same, probably have breakfast, drive to work, same routine, brush our teeth. But it's that 5% where you can create the change. It takes 21 days to break a habit and 21 days to create a new one. So for you to do something new every day, neurons in the brain which fire together, wire together. Mm -hmm. So if you do something new for 21 days, then the subconscious mind starts repeating that. So if you're a negative bastard and you keep <laughs> thinking about shit or eating shit, I want to go on a diet, I want to change this, you'll do it for three, four days, but then the subconscious will just click into play again. You'll go over it and over it and over it. That's why mm -hmm. in the morning, if you could, have your goals set out, plan your night, plan your day the night before, mm -hmm. and then if you can create that for 21 days, then that'll be on repeat. Whether it's go to the gym, people say, oh, I'll go to the gym for two or three weeks and I feel amazing. Because the subconscious mind starts repeating that, it just becomes natural. Mm -hmm. It becomes natural. So for me, I know I'm lazy, so I need to break that mold, half four, and then it just becomes more natural and then I'll get more done. So because what happens is if we think about the past, the traumas, whatever trauma we've had in our life, if we've all had, the brain releases that chemical. So if I was to think about what the traumas I had in my life, the brain releases the chemical to the emotion I felt that day. So the brain doesn't know if it's happening in the present moment or back in the past. Mm -hmm. So that's where the poison will kick in and then we feel like shit. Mm -hmm. But you can break the mold, you can change your mindset. It's a very, very difficult thing to do, but people do it and it mm -hmm. can happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't want this, this to come off as in any way disparaging towards other people, but how many people do you think that the things that you talk about um, it kind of resonates with them, or they're like, oh yeah, that's right, you know? Yeah, and no, well, it's just like I say, it's about education, it's just about becoming aware and, and just digging a wee bit deep and trying to understand things a wee bit more. I just wanted to know where addictions came from, I wanted to know why I was like that, I wanted to know why I was the person I was, because hmm. everybody's got goodness in them. Mm -hmm. When you're born, everybody's got goodness and greatness in them. I think it's Einstein that says that, that everybody's a genius. Yeah. Everybody's different. But if you judge a fish by abil yeah. its ability to, to uh, climb a tree, yeah. then everyone will grow up exactly. thinking they're stupid. So yeah. Everybody's <laughs> different. Everybody has got something in them. But from the schooling at four or five years of age, you're taught to sit at a desk. And yeah. How can you become that individual or creative? You might not want to sit at a desk. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? You might People might have the visions or ideas, and then before you know it, you've been conditioned to just live the life that you don't want to live. Yeah. So it's about educating yourself and rewiring your brain and figuring out who you are again, which is so difficult because to unravel all those layers, you become like an onion. Yeah. So for me, I was I was wrapped around in so many layers, the false, the mask, the loudness, the daftness. I forgot who I was. I don't know who I was. So unraveling it all now, I'm starting to go, right, wait a minute, I am sensitive. I know I've got this problem. I know I've got this issue. It's no easy to admit you've got problems. 
But you people can change, and for anybody watching or listening, you can change. You can benefit your life. I don't give a fuck how far, how messed up you think your life is, or what age you are. Or if you get air in your lungs, you've got something to give life, and you can change. And mm -hmm. that's a fact. That's a hundred percent truth. If you want to change, you can change. You can create it, and I'm living proof of that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> What, what was the inf inspiration for starting your podcast then? Um, I watched Joe Rogan. I like a lot of Russell Brand stuff. A lot of Russell Brand stuff is about uh, his words I don't I struggle with. Um, he, he says a lot of big words, but it's good because I'll Google him and I go, all right, wait a minute, it makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know, I just like people who, who are versatile and can talk about different things. I can get bored easy, so I like to dip my toe in. I like the way these guys speak, and I believe I've come through a lot in my life for people now. Uh, understand that a wee bit more because the people who do know me in Glasgow know how much a wee bit of a rogue I was and to see the change it gives people other inspiration so for me I wanted to create the Anything Goes podcast show where people can come in, different guests, different people from all walks of life and I think yeah people can relate to it like I say it's, it's right out in your face there there's no <laughs> fucking about it's uh, yeah. straight to the point you know I like to call a spade a spade there's no uh, <laughs> it's no scripted or let's come in, let's chat and let's see your problems, let's talk about your life, let's talk about your goals and like I say, it's all over the place but I like that way, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean, I do, I like that. Uh, Bit of chaos. Yeah, I like chaos, <laughs> uh, I'm used to it, if yeah. I'm on a, that's where I'm comfortable, um, is the madness and the chaos, I do feel comfortable, um, that's where I feel alive, yeah. I feel alive not knowing what the fuck's going to happen or get says, I feel it keeps me on my toes. Um, but like I say, we've had porn stars in, we've had footballers, we've had yeah. comedians, politicians, um, people who's been in prison. Mm -hmm. it's, it's good, man, and people can relate to something. It's in it, whether you're a, a criminal or a lover of porn, um, <laughs> you can get something from it, do you know what I mean? But there's a lot of people who talk about suicides, and the majority of the guests that come in, what I'm good at is making people present their best self to me. People can relax, people forget the cameras are there. Mm -hmm. So people can, then they become open. If I talk about my problems, go, wait a minute. He's got fucking problems, oh, wait, I've got problems. So you start competing against each other to tell each other who's got the most problems. The thing about life, man, we've all got problems. Mm -hmm. Don't ever look at anybody and think, he looks as if he's got a great life, because nobody knows what's, everything's internal. Mm -hmm. The external fuck stuff doesn't mean fuck all. Mm -hmm. The big car or the house or the jewellery, trust me, it doesn't mean anything. So for anybody watching, don't look at somebody and think, I wish I had their life, mm -hmm. because you don't know what's going on inside mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it, it sounds so cheesy and that but everything's within love is within and that's yeah. a place i'm trying to get to is to love yourself because sometimes i dyed my hair last week seriously i dyed my hair last week and i was thinking why did i do that but that's still a wee bit of ego for me i'm trying to because i'm looking at myself and think oh i could do this and but then i'm like why am i doing that i questioned it after that uh but let's like say i done it and uh, aye. What was your original motivation just, for doing it? Then? I don't know. I, I don't know. A wee bit of ego for me, still. So I'm still trying to think. I'm 24, 25. Okay. I'm hang on to my youth. The grey hairs are coming in pretty okay. fast, and uh, <laughs> I was just trying to hang on to my youth. It's not. It's, listen, it's not a bad it's thing. But that, for me to promote uh, love is within and all that shit, and then I'm I just feel a bit. I shouldn't have done so? that. But a bit dirty. Yeah, but listen, I'm not. I'm human. <laughs> It's true. Mm -hmm. It's true. <laughs> your, your podcast does get a lot of engagement. Why do you mm -hmm. think that is? It's honest. There's no fucking about. Glasgow, the Glasgow crowd are a tough crowd. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And and they'll see through bullshit. They see right through it. So for me, it's as honest as I can be. Like, I'm not saying I still tell lies, but I'm honest with myself. I can be. Because if I can't be honest with myself, I can't be honest with anybody else. So the good thing is that people. Respect the honesty, because the majority of people, we are struggling, we're in pain, we don't know what happiness is anymore. So when you can show them a wee bit of light, then people can engage onto that, like, wait a minute, oh, I like that. Yeah. Listen to the, the mindset, listen to these breathing techniques, mm -hmm. listen to the guests that have changed, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Yeah. We've all got different paths and people can relate to it, I believe. Well, they're starting to relate to it more now because the bigger your profile becomes, the more people who take notes and then they, they start listening because then they can see the change. Yeah. They can see, all right, fuck man, he has changed, which is a good thing and it makes me feel proud because the amount of people who are maybe on drink or drugs or suicidal, I get every night, it's unbelievable. Yeah. But the people who've come on the show, or the woman Anne Rowan in, she lost her son to suicide. Um, after, so what happens is, traumas happen in your life. 
I'm laying in bed for a while. She probably suicide of herself. Because you start blaming yourself. Was it me? Was it this? That? So it can go over. Your mind can go overboard. And she never, she never let it defeat her. So what I did was set up a 24 hour uh, suicide centre. Now she saved thousands of lives where people can phone, phone up and speak. Not just for people who are suicidal, but for people who've lost someone to suicide. Mm -hmm. These people places do like a thing called Havening, which is amazing. Reiki, just someone to speak to. Mm -hmm. And she used that to her advantage, her son's death. And now, like I say, you can either make it destroy you or you can make it kick on in life and do something more important. And she's a prime example that she never let a trauma affect her. Now she's doing massive things. A place called Chrissy House, man. Um, people phone up. Like I said, some of these doctors close at five o'clock. Suicide's always going to be there if you've got those thoughts. Yeah. They're twenty four seven. Amazing people. Um, met them loads of times. I've got an event actually this week for it, which I'm looking forward to. But yeah, it's good because people watch that and they, they realise that they're not alone. Yeah. Because we're all our mind goes overboard. We're all we're all fucked. Basically, we're all we're all <laughs> fucked. Yeah. It's trying to find the balance what makes you feel good. And it's okay not to be okay. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. okay to have problems. It's okay to look at somebody and wish that, but you've got to understand how's it making you feel? Uh -huh. Do you know what I mean? It's okay to ask for help because 75% of suicide are male because for the area I'm from is a tough area. So listen, everywhere's a tough area probably, but if you're from those scheme areas, it's if you're fighting or you're crying, it's toughing up, man up. Uh, real men don't cry, so mm -hmm. before you know it, your time you hit 30 or 40, you don't know how to handle feelings and emotions, mm -hmm. so you just want to end it. And mm -hmm. it's scary to think, being suicidal, I've, I've probably had the thoughts, but I've never had the balls to actually follow through with it. But for people to sit there and think, nobody cares, or, um, it must be scary, because the only thing with suicide, you're not really, if you take your life, you're not really uh, taking your problems away. What you're mm -hmm. doing is just passing it on to somebody else. Whether yeah. it's a loved one or something like that, and it's scary to think that people are alone. They're not alone. There's plenty of places out there offering help. So when Anne lost her son, it was over a thousand people at his funeral. Just didn't feel as if it was good enough, or it's easier to think you're taking your pain away because you're not worthy. But like I say, man, everybody is, and people can change their mindset. So yeah, it's good. So mm. these are the people who are coming on the show and they're making a massive difference. So it's good, man. I'm, yeah. I'm loving it. I'm really loving it. That's brilliant. Yeah. It really is. I mean, it's well documented that suicide's obviously the yeah, biggest yeah. killer of young mm -hmm. men in the UK. Like, mm -hmm. it is a, it's 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 awful. Mm -hmm. It really is. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes people. Um, I'll be careful what I say here. Um, I'll say I think people kind of underestimate how traumatic the experience of life is, mm -hmm. which might sound a bit kind of mm -hmm. esoteric to some people. But you know, you ultimately come into this world. You've got people around you that love you, and then you have the realization that it's all just going to. You know, mm -hmm. one day not be here. Yeah. You're gonna be, you're gonna be dead, and everyone mm -hmm. around you is. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty serious situation to yeah, find yourself in. That, <laughs> yeah, that. But then again, that's the mindset. The mindset can play tricks on us. Everything's <laughs> the brain. It's to find that balance. For me, it's all natural stuff. I became vegetarian. Um, these breathing techniques, the exercise, and it, it feels good for me. It gets mm -hmm. the endorphins, which is a natural buzz. I'll go to the gym. Listen, go to the gym, but I'm only feeling good for a couple hours. And then I, I'll drop again and I'll go, all right, what can I do now? Because I get bored and then I get overthinking and yeah. the anxiety can kick in. So it's about keeping busy all the time and try to do, and try to find balance in your life. Mm -hmm. now, I'm not saying to everybody to stop drinking, but for me, drink's a drug. Mm -hmm. It's a sociably accepted drug in the world because everybody does it. Hmm. It's okay to do it, but it lowers your frequency. Mm -hmm. It makes you feel, people drink why, and I believe because it loosens them up and it makes them forget. It takes yeah. them away from their pain. It takes totally. them away from their 95. It takes them away from their misery, but mm -hmm. then that's a hundred times worse the next day. And if you add up all the times, the months, the years that you drink, it's so much out of your life, so much, whether it's the Saturday, the Sunday, and then the Monday, Tuesday, you're knackered. It becomes a, a massive percentage of your life gets took away because you think standing in a nightclub or standing in a pub, sitting drinking is the way forward. It's not, mm -hmm. because you're not, how's that enhancing your life? How's that taking to where you need to be? And I'm not speaking for everybody here. There's people who can have a sociable drink, but for me, the people I speak to, it's every two or three nights people are drinking. Mm. That one glass of wine turns into two, and then before you know it, that one night turns into three or four, and then before you know it, you depend on it. People come home from work and say, I need a wee glass of wine to chill out. Mm. That ain't the way you should be chilling out. Mm. Get yourself into yoga, get your breathing techniques. 
work on your mindset. Mm. Get your feet up, get the candles on and listen to some music and but don't drink because what it happens is it'll dumb you down, it'll lower your frequency and then it'll make you feel a bit hazy the next day. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. It, it, it's a slippery slope, so be careful for people who are drinking yeah. that because it can lead up to other things, do you know what I mean? It's good advice, for sure. W- what's the vision for the podcast? To be number one in the UK, yeah. I'm going right for the top, mate. If your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough. Like I say, I'm not as big a name as Russell Brands and stuff like that, but I believe in my content, I believe in me, and I believe it's out there. Where it's, yeah, why not be number one? If your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> or to, ah, fuck it. Yeah. 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 Like I say, I'm enjoying it. And for me, that's my ego to be number one. Do you know what I mean? I can, uh-huh. I can sit there and say it's not, but that's a goal for me. And if I achieve that goal, there's always small steps for these goals. And if I achieve those goals, that's the, the buzz I'm getting. Mm-hmm. It's creating these small goals. And then when I, I hit them, I feel good. But then I need to go again. Everything's about progression. Tony Robbins will say it. You've got to keep raising the bar because as soon as you think you've made it, you've already took two steps back. So I need to hit this target. I need to go again and keep raising and keep raising. And if I keep doing that, then everything's limitless. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The only, yeah. the only person that can fail is myself. So I've just got to keep moving up that ladder, the pyramid, and just keep taking the steps up to be sitting at the top. But even when you're at the top, you're never really there because there's always somebody better or whatever. But success leaves clues. I look at all these other people are doing well and they go, right, wait a minute. What is it they're doing differently? You try and copy a wee bit, but you still got to put your own spin to it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, shoot for the top. Why not? (laughs) Quite right. Mm -hmm. Homeless at Christmas. Yes. How how did that first come together? Homeless at Christmas was, um, I was was down in London for a business meeting, speaking to a homeless man. I've always gave homeless people my time of day and always did my wee bit and a wee sandwich here, but... For me, it's not enough. So I was speaking to a homeless man in London. He served his country for 18 years. His wife committed suicide. Uh, the kids blamed him because he was away working all the time. Guy had to drink. He was on the street for six years. So Jeez. I don't know, it just melted my heart. Um, both of us were crying at that time, actually. I think it was like the 14th of December and I phoned my friend Gordon. Uh, and I says, look, man, I need to meet you. I've got an idea. And he says, okay. And I met him at Costa. And I says, look, I've got an idea. I'm going to go homeless for seven days and I'm going to do it through Christmas from 19th of December to 26th. And he says, he says, yeah, man, he backed us. Gordon Campbell, great guy. Yeah, he backed me. And, uh, I never had that much time to think about it. If I probably had more time, I'd have probably spoke myself out of it. Mm-hmm. But the plan was to go homeless for seven days. Uh, no phone, no money. Uh, nothing, basically, just the clothes I had in my back, sleeping bag and my rucksack with my camera. Uh, told my family and friends I was going on a seven day fitness retreat. Um, I wasn't allowed my phone, so I didn't want anybody worrying. I certainly didn't want a party back, but what I knew I was doing was massive, and I knew it would have been, I would have got a lot of respect for it. Mm-hmm. So like I say, everything I do is for me, <laughs> but no matter what way you look at it, I'm still creating massive awareness. Yeah. It was also helping me become a better person, mm-hmm. because I can speak all this positive shit, but it is only words. Mm. I don't fucking mean anything, it is words. Actions speak louder than words, and for me to do the seven days at Christmas, the sleeping in the streets was fine. I like roughness, that doesn't bother me. It was the stories I was hearing. One of the girls got raped twice in a day. Um, people were setting them on fire, peeing on them, uh, stabbing them. It broke my heart. I'm not a psychologist, but the footage that we got, it's only been released over a week. And we've had over 3,000 messages with people came and fo- coming forward to help a hand and, and realise because a documentary doesn't make you look at homeless people differently. It makes you question your own life mm-hmm. because so many is loving luxury and we love to moan and complain about the stupidest things. So for me, I'm proud of it. And I don't know why I did that, like I say, but it just needed to be done. I just think, I put weight on. The seven days I was homeless, I put weight on. <laughs> with all the food I was getting offered, I was because I was at the soup kitchens every day, Christmas dinners. Um, there's so much generosity, like I say, there is mm-hmm. a lot of goodness in the world, mm-hmm. but a lot of people are blinded by uh, life and everybody's got their own problems and we can't just save the world, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But just showing somebody that you care, two minutes of your time, just because, there's a lot, listen, there's a lot of beggars on the street who are homeless as well, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm not saying save everybody, mm-hmm. and, but there's a lot of people who are con artists, there's a lot of professional beggars. But for me, I was staying with the, I was sleeping in the streets with the people who were homeless, who have kind of gave up in life, and that's low self-esteem, that's low confidence, that's not just a case of rehoming someone. 
because you can't just rehome someone that's got addiction problems. I know people out there with two jobs that can't keep a house. Mm -hmm. So for you to rehome someone, they'd lose the house anyway. So as I come up with a new system, I'm trying to come up with a new system, which is a 12-week programme. While we're in this 12-week programme, we've got um, drink programmes, drug programmes, mental health programmes. We've got psychologists in. I've got veterinarians in. I've got yoga teachers. I've got motivational speakers. I've got comedians. This system's a 12-week programme. It's so off the cuff. But something needs to change. Yeah. Something needs to change. And, and there's so much red tape around it, but I've got to roll the dice. Mm -hmm. We've got to try these things. And like I say, it's, it's, I've got different visions from everybody else. And like I say, there's so much charities out there who give food and blankets and food. But for me, I need to change the mindset. Mm -hmm. And I can't force change upon people. People want to, want to change. But when I speak to these people and you give them two minutes of your time, they want to change. I need to set up a, a place. I, this system I'm trying to set up, I believe it's not just going to work in Glasgow, but I believe worldwide. Jeez. Do you know what I mean? Because you're, you're homeless doesn't mean you're dead. You've still got a personality. There's people in my full of laughs and jokes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You just, you just kind of lost your way and it's easy done. Mm -hmm. And this is the scary part of society now. It can happen to anybody. Mm. They say you're only one or two paychecks away from being homeless. If you lose a loved one or you lose your job, lose your kid, you can go home. You can end up sleeping on the street. It can happen to anybody. So this documentary awakens people, and that's why it's been so powerful because yeah. people can relate. People can go, wait a minute, we're all human beings. In my eyes, we're all connected. We're all as one. Mm -hmm. And if you're helping somebody else, I'm doing all this stuff, help try to help others. But like I say, I'm one, and I feel good. It's rewarding me, yeah. and that's the, the no matter what way you look at it, I'm one, and I feel good. Yeah, Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's a selfish way, but. It's selfish in a way, it is and it isn't. Do you know what I mean? I'm still creating good, but like I say, it's me, it's rewarding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wh whose responsibility do you think it is to help try and fix the homeless situation? Human beings. There's, seven billion, yeah. there's over seven billion people in the world. Yeah. People blame councils and the governments. Mm -hmm. Stop pointing fingers. Take fucking responsibility if you want change. Become the change yourself. Mm. If one person, me and my two guys, can create massive awareness and create thousands of people, to create help after a week, mm -hmm. then what would it be like if we had a thousand or ten thousand? Yeah. Stop pointing fingers, man. There's so many people living council estates from the government. Stay in these houses. It's not the government's problem that the mindsets went to some people that mm -hmm. they've accepted that life. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But as human beings, it's just two minutes of your time, just forget what's important. That's a human being sitting there. That's somebody's son or daughter, mm -hmm. somebody's friend, somebody's mum or dad. Do you know what I mean? It's just you think all the people that walk by in the city centre every day, there's tens of thousands. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And so if, for me, it's just to make the moves myself and create these things. It's trial mm -hmm. and error. The thing I've got with the 12-week programme, I know it'll work. Yeah. But like I say, I'm going to make a lot of mistakes. I want to get doctors in as well, people to give it a cut of hours of their time. Um, every month, I believe a lot of people want to help out. I believe with this new vision and new idea that people will come forward to help out. Mm -hmm. And I, I know it'll work. I know it'll work. If I keep edging educate myself on the mindset and how to create the change in the mind. There was a man in my documentary who was 32 years old in heroin. Mm -hmm. Changed his life. Mm -hmm. Guy Charlie changed his life and now he's doing amazing things. Now he's helping other people. Mm -hmm. Change their life. People can change. That's the beauty of life. Make, these mistakes make us who we are today. And all the fuck ups I've done, man, I'm proud of it. I've still got a conscience and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for everybody I've fucking done wrong, but I've still got to be proud of it. I can't live there and go with the regret because then I feel like shit and then I can't do all these big things that I'm doing. Yeah. So I've just got to accept it, move on. Now it's all about the present moment and creating the future that I want. Awesome. Mm. Awesome. Well, you know, kind of on that topic and we're going to go a bit deeper into the sort of yeah, philosophical stuff just now, but what do you kind of think is like your, your purpose in life? Helping people. Yeah. First of all, you've got to help yourself, which is the main thing. There's so many people helping everybody else, but I believe if you're trying to save everybody else, it's really you that needs saving. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just believe I'm getting in a good place mentally where I'm all feeling good. And all the materialistic stuff, I've said it before, listen, I'm a big poser. The hair and the tan and <laughs> it is all bullshit. When I'm helping somebody, that's when I really feel at one. That's when I feel, I feel alive here because I walk away feeling I've done something good. Mm -hmm. I've done something good here. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that I feel good and that's what we should be craving. Helping people, like I say, I'm no fucking, I don't know what's right or wrong for anybody, but yeah, for me, yeah. these are the results that I'm getting and because I'm not helping other people, I'm creating awareness and this is only the state, I've already done that documentary, but that doesn't mean what, so so what basically? So what do I do now? I've got to 
keep going, keep raising the bar and keep trying to get the help that, that's needed to create the change. I believe I can change the world, man. Jesus. People used to laugh, but I'm not fucking laughing there, I'm telling you. Do you know what I mean? This is a guy from, from fuck all. Do you know what I mean? And I've got to keep going, but I've got to stay in this path. Like I say, I can rip the whole ceiling down yeah. in a heartbeat. Yeah. So I've got to <laughs> stay focused. If I've not got any dreams or ambitions, then my mind can go wandering. What's your sort of five year plan? For my life? Well, yeah, at the moment, like, what's your kind of vision for where you're going? Yeah, just keep doing what I'm doing. Become a better dad. Okay. Still got to have some anger issues as well. Become only person I'm competing with is myself. Still get mm -hmm. frustrated. Um, still can get lazy. Take control of my life more as well. Utilise my hours. Work on my podcast. Create another couple of documentaries. Yeah. I don't want to be in this game forever. Do you know what I mean? Because the life I'm in, it, even... The, the limelight as well and the social media stuff is fake, it's false for me. I want to kind of get out of that maybe six years and no disconnect, but just come away from it. it. Just It doesn't seem natural, but right now I need it to create the platform to create the mass, the mass changes. Do you know what I mean? But there's going to yeah. be six years, I believe, I'll do all this and then I'll come away from it. And just, really? Yeah. What do you see yourself doing beyond that? Helping people, but yeah. not as, as front, not as full on as y yeah. the face. Yes. Maybe the back the background work. Do you know what I mean? Okay. And, uh, creating up this, like I say, this vision to create massive change. Like I say, to change the world and change the mindset. There's things in place in Canada are doing just now. The homelessness figures have, have dropped massively. Success leaves clues. So why are we not copying these people? Yeah. Um, unless, yeah. So I just need, to, like I say, keep working on me, becoming a better person every day. Because mm -hmm. I've still got a lot of faults and flaws that I go, on. I shouldn't fucking do that, man. I need to change that. Okay. Um, so it's just become a better version of myself. I don't know what's five years around the corner. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen tonight. Do you know what I mean? We could be lying in <laughs> our boozers, fill a coat and fucking lie in a big puddle of pish. Oh, I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Inspired oh, Edinburgh just sitting there doing a slippery slope. Cheers, big man. Do you know what I mean? I just don't know. <laughs> it's just to be a better version of myself. Yeah. Keep improving on me. I'd like to get in really good shape again. Yeah. Because, uh, listen, yeah, yeah, fitness doesn't define you as a person, mm -hmm. but mentally I feel good about myself. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And the money doesn't define you as a person, mm -hmm. but I feel good about me if I'm doing the right things because, like I say, I become lazy. I can sit in with my crisps and my chocolate at night and I get com that's my comfort zone, mm -hmm. but it happens every night. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then I feel like a fraud because if I'm promoting all this positivity, how can I do that if I'm... I need to lead by example. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I need yeah. to take the reins and become this this blueprint that I've got in my mind to where I want to be. And it's huh. it's no easy. It's no easy, but I'm doing it. I'm still doing it, but I just, I'm aware of all these wee things that I go, ah, oh, fuck's sake. Should I be sitting in my bed eating a big packet of McCoy's when <laughs> I should be running or something? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> do you know what I mean? So I, I kind of kick myself because I'm, uh, I'm, this is just conditioning for so long, mate. Yeah. My dad used to take us, we used to go out at like 10, 11 o'clock at night, he used to go to the petrol station and it was like, <sighs> Bars of chocolate, we used to get the paper, and I've still got that conditioning in me. Like, I've got a shot at 10 o'clock, and I'm eating a packet of crisps, but I know I'm doing it. I'm, I'm like eating myself as if I'm, I've just I've, I've done something wrong. Do you know what I mean? It's not the worst thing, but it's not taking me towards the person I want to become. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's slippery. Yeah. <laughs> well, what would you like your legacy to be, James? A good guy, a guy who's changed, um, a guy who's done massive things. I want people to be proud of me. Do you know what I mean? I want people to go, yeah, he's, he did well, that man. He, he did well from what he came from and how he did. And I want to lead, to, like I say, I want to be at the forefront now and, and lead by example and show people that can change. I want to create massive changes. I'm not on it for baby steps. I'm in it to change the light of what the world, man. I'm in it to change and make moves and create massive, <laughs> massive changes awesome. in people's mindsets. And mm -hmm. like I say, everything's baby steps, but these baby steps are becoming serious strides now and people are starting to sit up and take notice of what I'm saying, saying and doing yeah, which is yeah. good man it's, it's good it's, I'm, but like I say I'm proud sometimes because I'm living this it doesn't feel right it doesn't feel as, it, it just, every day feels the same do you know what I mean in this picture in your head you think when I get this far and that far that's it that's what I'm, I've achieved that I've done it but uh -huh. when you get it I exactly. still feel the fucking same, same man. I'm still eating my McCoy's and sucking, so sitting in the house fucking <laughs> shit. It does nothing changes. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, and that's totally. the tricky thing in life. Because what happens is, for a couple or whatever, they'll say, right, I'm going to get married. I'll get a house. 
But when they get it, they're still fucking miserable. Do you know what I mean? Nothing changes. Because, uh, listen, I'm not saying for anybody don't get married, but for me, when you do that, you, you've got these goals in your mind when you, I'm going to get the house, the baby, the marriage, but when you get that, you go, is this it? Mm-hmm. You've got a 25 year mortgage, you can't really, you've, you've got a guy there or a woman, you probably can't be fucking sick uh, anymore, and you're, <laughs> but you're, you're in it the long haul because you've signed up for it. Yeah, Do you know yeah. what I mean? But is that, we've just conditioned to think that's the way forward. That's yeah. what, that's the final piece of the jigsaw, but it's not because when we become a couple or become, there's so many happy couples out there, but when you become a couple or whatever, this is a guy that's never had a serious relationship, but do you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's hard for me to judge, but when you become a married couple, then you kind of stop working on you. You kind of forget who the fuck you are. You kind of become settled and in a routine, and that's where the probably frustration, the anger kicks in maybe five year, 10 years down the line, because we stop working as, as human beings. For me personally, I want to meet somebody who's going to push me and see my visions and, and, and vice versa mm-hmm. to help build these dreams and ambitions instead of just getting the house and pff, I've got two kids, but another couple of kids and, <laughs> and settling because mm-hmm. you can come into bad habits and I'm a, I don't want that. I don't want to just settle. I, I kind of want to get everything in place and take over the world, man. And I know it sounds crazy, but I'd, maybe I'm just scared of commitment as well. Mm-hmm. So I've just jumped all the gun here, but that's fine, man. It's probably just uh, <laughs> a wee bit scared of commitment. But for me, uh, I just don't want to just settle. I don't want to just settle for that that final piece of the jigsaw that I need. This diamond, the girl needs a diamond ring on her finger. Or, do you know what I mean? Because the, the, a wedding now just looks like a big party. Do you know what I mean? There's, where's the love in that? Because yeah. they say the dearer the ring, the most lo- the most chance the the divorce. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, it's difficult to. To look at that as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't even know what the question was. Earlier. No, I just fine, totally that's jumped fine. to other yeah, places. Yeah. <laughs> that's what <laughs> I do. <laughs> it's, I think it's often the whole expectation versus reality thing. You know, mm-hmm. you think that because you're getting married, everything's going to change, but mm-hmm. it won't. That won't always necessarily yeah. be the case. Yeah, that's what I was at because, like I say, when you get these things, nothing changes. Yeah, I still feel fuck me. Where's my McCoys? You know what I mean? I need my <laughs> comfort because I, I'm, it, people keep telling me how good I'm doing, and I kind of know in my mind I am. But I still feel the same. Ain't nothing's changed. Do you know what I mean? It's fuck all changed. Mm-hmm. Which is scary to think that I keep doing these things and that's why I need to keep creating more goals because if those goals go, my flame will go out and then I, that's when I'm scared that the bad habits yeah. kick in again. So it's a very thin line. It's thin ice. Do you know what I mean? So I've got to keep going. If I stop, then I'm running that boozers. I'll be chatting your door at five in the morning, <laughs> mate, for an after party. <laughs> let's let's just totally hypothetically let's pretend for a moment that your podcast is number one in the uk Mm -hmm. how do you feel the same yeah that's what i'm saying (laughs) it's not really it doesn't mean shit what does it mean Uh do you know what i mean it just for me it's like setting a goal yeah and hitting that target but then yeah after that 24 40 hours that goes and that's where i think a lot of celebrities are fucked up football players because when they're craving all this attention, mm-hmm. when that goes, the, the life doesn't, as if, am I not that, my, my life not worthy anymore? Mm. Because we're craving that attention, it's, it's self-seeking. Mm-hmm. So if you're a singer in all these bands or whatever it is, if you're craving all that attention, if that attention starts to go, your career, you think your career starts to go, you don't feel as worthy that nobody cares anymore. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because it's, it's crazy. Like I say, all these benchmarks, when you get it, it goes, the, the buzz goes. The documentary was released last week, the buzz was there for two days because of the hype. Yeah. But then that goes. Mm-hmm. And then so, do you know what I mean? So that's when you need to keep creating the progression and mm-hmm. what do I do next? Mm-hmm. So it's, like mm-hmm. I say, it's, it's scary, man. It's fucking scary <laughs> life. It's not supposed to be easy, but it, it can be, it's tough. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is, it is. How do you define success? Inner, for the inner being of me, is creating good things that I know I'm proud of. Do you okay. know what I mean? Because what is success? What is mm-hmm. the fame? What is the these benchmarks that you're setting? What does it mean? It, it, it is irrelevant because everything's within. But if I know I'm setting these small goals, if I know I'm making changes, if I'm changing people's lives, that's a success for me. That's me. Oh wait, I'm leaving a mark. But I just don't want to change one or two lives. I want yeah. to change billions of lives. Jeez. Do you know what I mean? I want to change a massive, a massive shift. And I believe the shift is coming. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The, like attracts like, and the people I'm attracting in my life have. They've got vision, yeah, and they're fucking just as crazy as me. <laughs> Listen, we're all crazy, but th- these people, yeah, they're 
they understand that a wee bit. Mm -hmm. Even though I talk, people go, he's fucking nuts. Deep inside, they'll, they'll understand. They'll, they'll still feel it in their core that, wait a minute, you're actually talking about sense here. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So for me, the success is within for helping people and creating change. Mm -hmm. I mean, even, I've said it again, but when I'm doing all this, it's me it rewards from it. It's me it feels good. Mm. And like I say, I'm not, hey, people say, if you change one life, you've done good. I'm changing billions. I'm not changing. I don't know how it's going to be done. I just know if I keep doing what I'm doing, people are waking. Mm -hmm. And that, there's, listen, there's a lot of people are waking out there. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of people are waking, but it's hard to, for me, a guy from where I'm from, eh, you imagine speaking like this in a pub? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I get fucking shot. Or, so you're like, you're a fucking nutcase. People, my pals who I grew up with, when I started changing, they thought it was worse when I was changed than the guy I was, who was crazy. Okay. It was at parties with the clothes really? yeah, off yeah. and dancing. They thought, they think I'm worse. No, no now, because they see what I'm doing. And listen, it's hard for people to see me change as well, because even the people who I was close to, they become, not envious, but they become, they always don't think that he's never gonna change. They can't see why I can change, because they can't change. So they always think that's a mask, or he's kidding on, or they wait for me to fall flat in my face again. Mm -hmm. Because if you, what happens is if you start doing something in your life and you start doing good, then people start getting annoyed with themselves because they start questioning why can't I change? If he can do it, why can't I? Mm -hmm. And then the frustration comes in. So the friends who say you are friends become your enemies as well. Mm -hmm. Because even though I'm doing good, there's uh, people will support me, but there will also be a lot of people there waiting for that, for me to hit that hurdle. Yeah. So, which is, which is one of the bad things about it, trying to do good. Yeah. Because people, People's, everybody's got different opinions of everybody. My mum's got a different opinion of me. Maybe the ex-girlfriend who I've cheated on, he's a bastard him. But everybody's got different opinions, but mm. for, it's hard for people to change their views on you when you're trying to change. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I can't focus on anybody else. I need to do what's right for me. Absolutely. And, and, move, and move forward with that. Do you know what I mean? Totally. Totally. <laughs> well, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Oof. <laughs> That's a good question, that. <laughs> you can incorporate that into the podcast, are you? Uh -huh. Aye, aye. <laughs> aye, aye. Thank you. I knew there'd be something positive coming at this today. <laughs> I knew you were good for something earlier. <laughs> 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 yeah. What is the best advice I've ever been given? Um, that's a good question. <clears throat> I really thought about that, actually. I've really been given good advice before. <laughs> yeah, clearly. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all my advice, I've everything I've really educated myself as is probably through other through podcasts or through audio books. Mm -hmm. The thing that changed my life was the power of now. The book, the power Echo. of now. Yeah. yeah. He was the one that uh, it was an ex girlfriend that gave me that book. So I was going through the change. I, I sat in my company for two years and then I just I, I got the earphones in. And that's the thing. Just before I turned thirty, is it? Okay. The transformation was Amazing the power of book. now. Yeah. Um, I listened to it a couple of times, but he's a boring, he's a boring it's bastard, like, man. He's yeah. like, like, like we ding, and then he talks to it. I'm like, <laughs> so chapter one, it took us about a year and a half to, to listen to the other way. I kept falling asleep. <laughs> oh, um, but that was the thing, that was the, the thing that the stuff and that made sense mm -hmm. was about the present moment, which mm -hmm. is so difficult to live in the present moment, especially surrounded by everything. Unless you're a monk, you're never going to have that sense of bliss. Mm -hmm. You're never going to have that sense of peace and harmony because we're caught up in this fast, this fast world. But the power of now was was massive for me. The power mm -hmm. of now, and I read um, Outwitting the Devil, um, a lot of Louise Hay stuff, mm -hmm. Abraham Hicks. Yeah, brilliant. I liked um, Tony Robbins, and that was great at the start for me. Um, Les Brown, but I kind of went, they got deeper and deeper. Uh, yeah. Louise Hay. Abraham Hicks as well, great stuff. Uh -huh. um, all about the vortex and <laughs> uh, every, see all these motivational speakers, they speak the same. Mm -hmm. It's just different words. Every, it's all the same path where it's the law of attraction, the power of now. It's it's all kind of the same shit. Yeah, yeah. Just different different voices and different words. They kind of spin it around. Do you know what I mean? Totally. Yeah. But the, the the power of now is the I wouldn't because I've never had anybody give me advice and I would go, oh, that's changed my life. Do you know okay. what I mean? Yes. So for me, the power of now was the, the turning point for me. Thanks, Eck. Nice. Eck, 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 <laughs> Hart. 
Get boring, him on the boring. podcast. <laughs> Put me to sleep. <laughs> I want criminals and porn stars. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> it took me about a year and a half. To, nah, that's an exaggeration. But at chapter one, I was, I was out again. Yeah. It's just the voice. Uh-huh. I don't know if it's just so calm or pleasant. Or I just, I was like, because the first few chapters in that book are, are difficult. Mm-hmm. No easy. But then it, it just made sense to me. It made mm. sense. And then... That was a that was a turning point. Was that listening to that audio book? Mm-hmm. Awesome. I did it, can't. <laughs> if you had the opportunity to speak to your twenty-year-old self, what would you say? Mm. Stop fucking up, man. Get your grip yourself. Do you know what I mean? That's one of the biggest regrets in my life was never listening to my dad. Everything he ever says was true. Just about the circles I kept, and because my dad lived that life. Well, not live that life, but it was a jacket rad, and mm-hmm. he knew, he could see. He seen everything before I seen it. I was just naive, and I had the blinkers on. Mm. So for me, it would be, listen, listen. I never listened to anybody, I thought I knew everything. And I still think that, but I do now. <laughs> uh, listen, because I speak a lot, but listening is probably more important than speaking. Because if I listen, then I'm learning something that I don't know. If yeah. I'm speaking all the time, I'm speaking the same shit that I'm speaking. Do you know what I mean? So f- listening is the key element for me right now, is sit and listen. And that's what I've worked on in my podcast is to to listen to people and actually what they're saying. Mm-hmm. Because at the start, I was, if, if they start speaking, my, ans- my next question's already, I'm not listening to a fucking word they're saying, <laughs> but I'm ready to just throw in that question. So I'll throw in a question <laughs> and it doesn't make any sense of what they've said. I just, I'm, I'm just ready yeah. to go right, hurry up and finish so I can jump in. So for me, it's to, it's mm-hmm. to listen is a key element for, for me to kick on in my life is if I was to list 20, if I was 20s and it'd be listening James because people did try to help me yeah. and they say, you're fucking up. But I never listened. Mm. But I must have eventually, it must have all come into play because I've got a lot of good people around me. And, but that was the only thing my dad, I never listened to him. Mm-hmm. He knew. So mm. I hope he's proud. Mm. I can 100% relate to what you're saying about the podcast. Mm-hmm. That gets easier. <laughs> Good, I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Definitely. Because I'm waiting, I've got the question right, hurry up and yeah. fucking finish what you're saying <laughs> so I can throw that question at you. And it doesn't even make any sense <laughs> what they've just finished. Yeah. I just have that question. Yeah. So that's just listening is a key. Listening is just, if not more important than speaking because we're learning something new. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Everybody knows something that we don't. You'll know stuff that I don't, I know stuff that you don't. Mm-hmm. And that's the, the key because that's try to, that's me trying to preach again and try to throw everything that I know on people because it works for me. Mm. It might not work for me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So the key eye for me is listening. I'd tell myself to listen. Mm. I'd definitely listen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, I can't remember who said it, but I suppose it's the sort of belief that you can learn something from everyone. Yeah. Everyone's got something mm-hmm. that you yeah. can learn from. Mm-hmm. That's I, think I, heard, a really I don't good know who says that. I heard that as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. You see, I think I've heard a few people saying it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. Last question. Big question. Yes, give me that. <laughs> if you could change anything in the world, what would it be and why? What would I change? I don't know. I would take away the money, I think. I think money's the root of all evil. Yeah. Yeah. So it is, that's greed and power. If I could change anything, I would. I know it might sound crazy to people, but money's only been here for a few thousand years. Humans, planet's been here for, I don't know many humans, I've cut 100,000 years, so I'm saying millions, but. The planet's been here for billions of years. Money's an illusion. We crave it. We, we feel as if we need it, but that is only paper. <laughs> and greed poisons men's so much. It's greed that unbalances the world. So if I could change anything, I'd take away the money because I feel as if, if it was love, compassion and honesty, the world would be a great place. The mm-hmm. world would be an amazing place. Can you imagine seven and a half billion people <laughs> yeah. loving each other and being happy? And, and why can't it happen? Because money controls it. Money controls everything at greed and everything we need to do in life is, is for money at the end of the day. Everything's end, everything we do as end product is for money, which is scary. And well, it has to be, that's the way the world yeah, is sadly how it evolves. <laughs> and it is only paper, and for you to look at that and, and crave it, then it, it, it's crazy in my eyes. And listen, I'm sitting here with a suit on, and, and we need it to survive, do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? It, but we don't need it also, and it's the way the world, and if I, I think the world is just a wee bit upside down, and it can be tricky and for people Watching or listening, I don't mean you sound crazy, but for me personally, money's uh, it's really all evil, and it's what's it's creating 
mass destruction because everything that's created through wars mm -hmm. is through greed, through the money, whether it's the banking system, whether it's poppy fuels, whether it's the guns or whatever wars are created, it's, it's whatever behind that is created through the really evil of men try to take control and the powers of the world, which is scary. So, yeah, for me, if I could change anything, I'd, I'd change money situation. I'd make it dissolve. Yeah. yeah no, I, do, I do, well, on that basis, I do have one other kind of two-pronged question, I mm -hmm. think. Um, what would you replace money with? But this is kind of diverging, but hopefully it'll come to the same thing. If you were to recreate the way that we live on Earth or take everyone mm -hmm. from Earth and put them on a different planet, mm -hmm. what would it look like? How would it operate? How would you, what would be the means for exchange and bartering? Yeah, just honesty, speaking, helping each other. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't need to exchange anything. Do you know what I mean? If people needed a hand with anything, then you would help. You would give a, a helping hand. Everything would be natural for me. The animals would be here, the planet would be here, the, all the trees, everything would be here. No pollution. We could have cars running in water. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Again, mm -hmm. money, poison mm -hmm. men's soul. Everything is created, the world revolves around money. So for me, I'd have a world with love and compassion and honesty and individuality. Be who you want to be, try not to judge. Do you know what I mean? You can, you've got to remember if you put a black kid, the white kid, Chinese kid, even a fucking purple kid together at birth, mm -hmm. those kids are going to get on. Mm -hmm. They don't yeah. know religion. They don't know anything. <laughs> for me, religion is to divide the world. For me, absolutely. they don't know none the wiser. So if you're conditioned, as soon as you're born, you're labelled, you're given a name, you're given a religion, you're given a football team to support. Listen, I'm, I'm not against anything, but for me personally, borders, religions, is to divide the world. Why should we be putting borders anywhere? Because skin colours, because of languages. Mm. Who says? Do you know what I mean? There should be one one world and that's one planet and it's Earth, one country, Earth. In my eyes, do you know what I mean? There's seven and a half billion people. Why not? Why are we not under the, we're under the same roof? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Why we're, are all we, we're all divided, <laughs> aye? Because yeah. it's greed, try to yeah. power everywhere. I think the United Kingdom, I think they've I think they've basically ransacked nearly every country except about 22, 23, but yet we're going about immigrants. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Everybody's mm -hmm. human. Same as the Native Americans in America, and I'm, I'm totally going off track here, but the, I think there's like millions and millions of these people were murdered. Mm -hmm. They were in America first. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It mm -hmm. was just, we're, cre we're, we're controlled with power and greed, and there's only a small, small majority of people controlling this world, and it's crazy to think, but the power of the people is so strong, and the people can wake up and realise we can have a good world, we can have a good... I, I might never see it in my life, but the world, there is a lot of goodness goes on in the world. But yeah. if you can create that ripple effect and create the changes and the stuff that we're talking about, or other people, maybe somebody will see it 10, 20 years down the line, and it'll make them want to change, and maybe they can jump on that. And you look at all these people who stand up for people, your Malcolm X's, your John Lennon's, and massive, massive mm -hmm. people who stood up and stood out the circle and tried to awaken people. And, all right, they may have got took out the cards, but. Um, yeah, it's just good to, to, like I say, just keep educating, keep learning. Yeah. For me, I'd have a one world, just want no countries, no bullshit, no fences, <laughs> no nothing like that, just have it. That's just me, but um, like I say, I've got oh, a like different it. path, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, people should uh, stop stop watching the news and start watching mm -hmm. the James English just podcast. podcast that, yeah, Edinburgh. exactly. That's a good way to get seven and a half billion in it. <laughs> I'm actually a fraud. This is all bullshit. I just want to get everybody <laughs> to watch my podcast. You know what I mean? And give me sponsored money. So I'm a fucking fraud. Do you know what I mean? Because uh, preach all this shit, but we're still in that. We're still in the circle in the bubble ourselves. Yeah, yeah. We need to survive. Do you know what I mean? I know. It's, it's crazy. But like I say, I don't want to contradict myself either. Yeah. But it's hard. It is. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Totally. Yeah, I know. They're, yeah. I'd love that I'd be, everybody would be happy and, do you know what I mean? Because I, speak, I see a lot of people, if you say hello to somebody on the train or whatever, walking the street, I think you're a fucking madman. Everybody's on their phones and their, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's so crazy. It's so crazy, but listen, each to their own. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Pub now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, James, I've had a brilliant time with Cheers, you. Cheers, mate. Listen, uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure. Cheers. You're, you're, you're absolutely somebody that kind of raises the vibration mm -hmm. of the people that you're around, which mm -hmm. I think is absolutely Appreciate awesome. That. So, oh, it's been a pleasure, Listen, honestly. Thanks for having me on. Uh, it's great oh, to meet you, man. Uh, pleasure, Thank you so much. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers.